Hey, so in section 3.5, we're going to be looking at implicit differentiation. We're going to be using this when we have um, equations or relationships where y isn't clearly defined in terms of x. So usually we're used to having y equal something um, that has a bunch of x's in it, but now we're going to have our y's mixed in with our x's. What this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to take the derivative of relationships that aren't functions. So, First, we're going to look at a roller coaster. So say that we have the equation of a section of a roller coaster, and it's given by y cubed plus x squared plus x equals 4y squared. Okay, so just looking at the picture real quick, we can tell right away that this is not a function because it fails the vertical line test. So what this relationship is, is that y measures our vertical distance, which is where we are up and down, and x measures our horizontal distance, so how far left or right we are. What we want to know is how our vertical distance changes as our horizontal distance changes. So what this means is that we want to find dy over dx. So here's how we're going to do that, is we're going to look at this whole equation. So y cubed plus x squared plus x equals 4y squared. And we are going to take the derivative with respect to x. Now what I can do is I can take the derivative of each piece with respect to x. So d over dx of y cubed plus d over dx of x squared plus d over dx of x equals and then d over dx of 4y squared. Great, so while I'm looking at this, there's something that's kind of bugging me. And what's bugging me is that here, what this is saying is it's saying, hey, find the derivative with respect to x, which is great because here I have an x variable, okay? The issue that I'm having here is it's saying, hey, take the derivative with respect to x, but then my variable's y. So like how, what does that even mean? So here's what I'm gonna do is I'm going to multiply this by a fancy dy over dy. Okay, now I'm just going to focus on this piece for just a second. So when I do that, what I can do is I'm going to have dy, okay, times d. So I'm going to rewrite that as, whoops. I'm going to rewrite that as dy over, and then I have dy times dx, so I'm going to have dx, d over dy, y cubed. So now what I can do is that I have this dy over dx over here, and now this piece tells me, hey, you can take the derivative with just respect to y. So the derivative of y cubed with respect to y is going to be 3y squared, and then I still have this piece out here, this dy over dx plus the derivative of this guy is 2x, plus the derivative of this piece is just 1. And now here, I would have to do the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply that by a dy over dy. And what I'm going to get is, again, on this piece, I'm going to get dy over dx. So I put this piece and this piece together times d over dy. 4y squared. So again, I'm going to be left with that dy over dx, and then I'm just going to be taking the derivative with respect to y now, so that's going to be 8y. Awesome. So now what I have to do is that I still need to solve for this dy over dx. So to solve for dy over dx, what we're going to do is that we're going to take every term that has a dy over dx in it, Okay, and we're going to move it to one side. So if I move this guy over to the right-hand side, I'm going to get 2x plus 1 equals dy over dx times 8y minus dy over dx times 3y squared. And now what I want to do is I want to factor out the dy over dx. So I'll have 2x plus 1 
equals dy over dx times 8y minus 3y squared. And then to solve for dy over dx, I just need to divide both sides by 8y minus 3y squared. So my derivative dy over dx will equal then 2x plus 1 divided by 8y minus 3y squared. And that would be my derivative, how y changes in terms of x. And the reason I still have a y in there, okay, is because I have multiple y's for each x I have, right? So right here, I have one, two, three different x's, or I'm sorry, three different y's for a single x. So I have to have that y included in my derivative. All right, let's look at another example. So we want to find the derivative of dy over dx given cosine of y equals x squared. So again, we're going to take the derivative with respect to x. of the whole thing. And again, on this left hand side, I'm taking the derivative with respect to x, but then I have a y. So I need to multiply by that dy over dy so that I can rewrite that as dy over dx times d over dy cosine of y equals this guy. So on this left hand side, I'm going to have dy over dx times, now this means take the derivative with respect to y, so the derivative of cosine of y would be negative sine of y equals, and the derivative of this side would be 2x. And again, I want to get that dy over dx by itself, so I need to divide both sides by this negative sine of y. So the derivative would be dy over dx equals 2x divided by sine of y. And remember, that's a negative sine of y, so I'm going to throw that negative up top. All right. Now, on the next one, we want to find the dy over dx given x cubed y to the fourth equals sine x plus cosine y. Hmm. So let's just go ahead and jump right in here. So I have x to the third times y to the fourth equals sine of x plus cosine of y. Okay, and again, I need to take the derivative with respect to x of this whole thing. So I'm going to have d over dx, x cubed y to the fourth equals d over dx sine of x plus d over dx cosine of y. All right, so I know that on this far right-hand side, I'm going to have to multiply that by a dy over dy. That's not too bad. Now on this side, okay, this one's going to get a little bit more complicated. Why is that? Well, what I'm doing is that I have x cubed times y to the fourth. So here's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to treat these as two different functions. I'm going to treat this as an f function, and this is my g function. I'm going to have to use the product rule. So when I use the product rule on this guy, I'm going to have the derivative of the first piece times, and then remember, we leave the second piece alone, plus, then we leave the first piece alone, times the derivative of the second piece. Oh, I'm sorry, that should have been to the fourth right there. Equals, and then the right-hand side. All right, so when we take the derivative, remember, whenever we take the derivative with respect to y, we're going to have to multiply by that silly dy over dy. So here's what you're going to get. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. And then we're just going to have y to the fourth, because we're not taking the derivative, we're just leaving it alone. Plus x cubed times, now remember, anytime I reorganize this d over dx and this dy over dy, 
I'm going to be left with the dy over dx. And then derivative of y to the fourth would be 4y cubed equals cosine of x plus, again, I'm going to be left with that dy over dx. And then the derivative of that is going to be negative sine of y. All right, now, just like before, what I have to do is I have to take everything that has a dy over dx and isolate it to one side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and subtract 3x squared y to the fourth from both sides. And then I'm going to add that dy over dx sine of y to both sides. So what that will give me is on the left hand side I'm going to have dy over dx and that will be 4x cubed y cubed plus dy over dx sine of y equals cosine of x minus 3x squared y to the fourth. Now, just like last time, the reason that I move everything that has a dy over dx to one side is because if I move them to one side, then I can factor out the dy over dx and then just do some simple division to solve my problem. So that's going to be dy over dx times 4x cubed y cubed plus sine of y equals cosine of x minus 3x squared y to the fourth. To get the dy over dx by itself, I have to divide both sides. So I'm going to get dy over dx equals cosine of x minus 3x squared y to the fourth divided by 4x cubed y cubed plus sine of y. Awesome. Now, the general rule is that you don't always have to break it up like that. The general rule is that if you take the derivative with respect to y, you just have to tag on a dy over dx or a y prime to that. So let's look at a couple more examples, and let's just use that general rule instead of convoluting it. And um... All right, so for the next one, let's find the equation of the tangent line to the point given. So we have the function x squared plus 2xy plus 4y squared equals 1, and we want to find out the point 0, comma 0 0.5. Now, whenever you're finding the derivative using implicit differentiation, you need both points. And the reason why is because this isn't a function, and finding the derivative at one point versus another might give you a different slope. So let's go ahead and find the derivative of this function. So we're going to have d over dx of x squared plus 2xy plus 4y squared equals 1. Again, we're going to take the derivative of each piece. So we're going to have d over dx of x squared plus d over dx of 2xy plus d over dx of 4y squared equals 1. Oh, d over dx of 1. My bad. All right, so the derivative of this first piece, that's easy. That's just going to give us 2x. Now, when we take the derivative of the second piece, I'm multiplying two things together, so I'm going to have to use a product rule. So that's going to be one function, like f, and this is going to be my other function, like g. So remember, the product rule says take the derivative of this first piece, which would just be 2, and then leave the second piece alone, so don't take the derivative of that piece yet. Plus, now we're going to leave the first piece alone times the derivative of the second piece. So what's the derivative of y? Well, it's just 1. And remember, by that rule above, whenever you take the derivative with respect to y, you need to tag on a dy over dx. Plus, 
Now we're going to take the derivative of this piece. So the derivative of 4y squared would be 8y. Again, because we took the derivative with respect to y, we need to tag on a dy over dx. Equals, and finally the derivative of 1 is just 0. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move everything that doesn't have a dy attached to it over to the other side. Remember, we want to group our dy over dx's together. And the reason for that is because then we can factor the dy out. So we're going to have dy times 2x plus 8y equals negative 2x minus 2y. Okay, And then we're going to divide both sides by this 2x plus 8y. So that will give us dy over dx equals negative 2x minus 2y divided by 2x plus 8y. Great, so that's our derivative, but the question asked us to find the equation of the tangent line to the point. So remember, the derivative is going to give us the slope of that line. So to find the slope of the line at that point, what we need to do is that we just need to plug in that point. So we're going to take that dy over dx of negative 2x minus 2y divided by 2x plus 8y and we're going to plug in that point 0 comma 0 0.5 so whoops, equals that not times it what that's going to give us is that's going to give us that dy over dx is going to equal negative 2 times 0 minus 2 times a half divided by 2 times 0 plus 8 times 1 half. So let's see, negative 2 times a half is going to give us negative 1. 8 times a half is going to give us 4. So the equation for a tangent line is going to be y minus 0 0.5 equals negative 1 fourth times x minus 0. Now, let's just double check our work using Desmos and see if this is correct. So, if I pull this up, I have my graph. So, I'm going to have y minus 0.5 equals negative 1 fourth times x minus 0. And look, that is, that's our tangent line right there. Perfect. So, just to review real quick. To find the equation of the tangent line, you have to find dy over dx. And we're going to use the same rules that we just learned, so the product rule, the quotient rule, the chain rule. And every time you take the derivative with respect to y, don't forget to plug on, or yeah, don't forget to tag on dy over dx. After you solve for dy over dx, go ahead and plug in that point, and that's going to give you your slope. So for the next one, I want you guys to pause the video and try to do it yourself first. So we're given the equation y squared times y to the so given y squared times y squared minus 4 equals x squared times x squared minus 5, find the line tangent at 0, negative 2. By the way, this is called the devil's curve, and we want to graph our solution in Desmos to confirm. So first off, I'm going to take this function and go ahead and graph it in Desmos right away. So y to the second times y to the second minus 4 equals x to the second times x to the second minus 5. Okay, and I'm also going to graph the point 0, comma, negative 2. All right, so they want me to find the derivative tangent to this point. So I should get a derivative that will eventually equal 0 if I plug in 0 and negative 2. So that gives me a really good place to start. So before I get started on this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole thing and I'm just going to expand it out. So that would be y to the fourth minus 4y squared equals x to the fourth minus 5x squared. Now when I take the derivative on this side, I'm going to have 4y cubed 
times dy over dx, because I took the derivative with respect to y, minus 8y, again, dy over dx, because I took the derivative with respect to y, equals 4x cubed minus 10x. Now, because I have a dy over dx here and a dy over dx here, I can factor those out. So that'd be dy over dx times 4y cubed minus 8y equals 4x cubed minus 10x. And then again, divide both sides by that 4x, or I'm sorry, that 4y cubed minus 8y. So we're going to have dy over dx equals 4x cubed minus 10x divided by 4y cubed minus 8y. Now, because we want to find the equation of the tangent line at 0, negative 2, we got to plug that in. So that is going to give us 4 times 0 cubed minus 10 times 0 divided by 4 times negative 2 cubed minus 8 times negative 2, which is going to give us 0. So the equation of the tangent line is going to be y minus negative 2 equals 0 times x minus 0. So let's go ahead and graph that and see if we are correct. So y minus negative 2 equals 0 times x minus 0. Ah, that looks amazing. We did so good. All right, we have one more example before we get into the second part of the section. So this one wants us to find y double prime, so the second derivative, given x squared plus y x, or plus xy plus y squared equals 3. So first off, let's take the first derivative. So it's going to be 2x plus, now remember here, we have to use the product rule. So that would be 1 times y plus x times 1, and then remember on the second part we took the derivative of y, so we have to tag on a y prime, plus 2y, again took the derivative with respect to y, so we have to tag on a y prime, equals 3. So we're going to group all of the y primes together, so we have negative 2x minus y, so subtract that 2x and that y from both sides. So we're going to have xy prime plus 2y times y prime equals 3 minus 2x minus y. Factor out that y prime to have x plus 2y equals 3 minus 2x minus y. So y prime will equal 3 minus 2x minus y divided by x plus 2y. Great, but we have to find y double prime. So here's what we're going to do is that we're going to take the derivative again. So the second derivative will be, now what rule do I have to use on this right hand side? I have to use a quotient rule, right, because I'm multiply or I'm dividing two functions. So that is going to be the bottom times the derivative of the top. So the derivative of 3 is 0. The derivative of negative 2x is negative 2. The derivative of negative y is negative 1. But remember, we just took the derivative with respect to y, so we have tag on a y prime. Minus, so we did the bottom times the derivative of the top. Now we have to do the top times the derivative of the bottom. So the derivative of x is just 1. The derivative of 2y is 2, but remember, just take the derivative with respect to y, so better tag on a y prime. All divided by the bottom squared. All right, now we're almost done, but we have to do something. What I have is I have the second derivative, but what I have mixed in there is I have the first derivative mixed in there. Now, we don't really want to have a derivative mixed inside of a derivative. It would be really nice if this was just in terms of plain old x and y. 
So what we need to do is that we need to substitute that in for that first derivative. So I know our answer is going to look ugly, but just go with me. So the solution would be y double prime equals x plus 2y times negative 2 minus that first derivative, so 3 minus 2x minus y divided by x plus 2y minus 3 minus 2x minus y times 1 plus 2 times, remember we have to plug that derivative in, all divided by x plus 2y squared. All right, great. So the next video is going to use implicit differentiation to talk about how to find the derivative of trig inverse functions. All right, and I'll also post some more videos with some more examples of this implicit differentiation because I know it's not the easiest thing to get right off the bat. So be sure to look out for those.